Hello photographers, let's talk about what settings to use for portrait photography. Portrait photography is complicated and to take a great portrait you need to make sure your camera is ready. There are a lot of things we're concerned with getting right including getting accurate focus, metering the subject properly, getting accurate colors, managing depth of field, and of course getting a great exposure. Managing depth of field and getting a great exposure are more about process than they are about a specific set of settings and we'll deal with them in a bit. For focus, color, and metering, there are specific settings you can use to ensure that you nail the perfect portrait. We'll start with focus. When shooting a portrait, the most important element to have in focus are the eyes. By default, most cameras have the full focus grid activated, and the camera tries to intelligently decide what to focus on in the scene. For lots of general photography, this is fine, but it will not do for portraits. For portraits, you want to take control and tell the camera exactly where to focus focus so that you know the eyes are in. The easiest and most reliable way to do this is to use and choose a single focus point. With a single focus point, you can tell the camera exactly where you want it to focus. How you do it varies from camera to camera, but choosing your focus point is pretty easy. For example, on Canon Rebel DSLRs, you can press and hold this button on the back of the camera and then spin your control dial or use your directional pad to select a single focus point. On Nikon D3, 3000 and 5000 series cameras, you go into the info menu and switch from AF area mode to single point AF mode, and then you can use your directional pad to change the focus point. If you don't know how to do this for your camera, check your manual or let me know what camera you're using in the comments and I'll comment back how you can change it. With a single focus point selected, you can then position that focus point on the subject's eye, ensuring that that is where the camera will focus. Another method that newer cameras offer is face or eye detection focus, and depending on the camera, that can work very well. If your camera offers this option, I recommend testing it out to see how well it works before you commit to using that over focus point selection. After designating a focus point, you want to consider your focus mode. I recommend single shot focus mode for portraits. For most cameras, this is the default focus mode, but some are set by default to an auto switching focus mode that I don't really like. If you're not aware, single shot focus mode is where you press the shutter button halfway down to get a focus lock. And that focus stays locked until you either take the photo or release the shutter button. The other type of focus is continuous focus where the camera is continuously adjusting focus as you hold the shutter down. I recommend single shot because locked focus is just more reliable than continuously adjusting the focus. If the focus is continuously adjusting, there's more room for error and a higher chance you'll miss focus. And continuous focus by its nature isn't always very accurate. The smart switching mode is called AFA for Nikon and AI Servo for Canon. This mode is supposed to intelligently switch between single shot focus behavior and continuous focus behavior if it detects a moving subject. That mode defaults to single shot behavior, so it's likely fine, but I prefer single shot because I like to know what's going to happen every time I press the shutter button to focus. Single shot focus is not with without flaws, but is generally more reliable and accurate for still subjects. With focus locked in, let's talk about color. To get accurate color, you need to choose the correct white balance, especially if you're not capturing your images in RAW. Now, I've never been the guy that says, if you don't shoot in RAW, you're not a real photographer, because, I mean, that's just stupid. But if you do shoot in RAW, you don't have to worry about your white balance quite as much, because you have a lot more latitude to fix it after the fact when you're processing those RAW raw images. I'm not saying you should shoot it in raw and fix it in post. Even with raw, I recommend you get your color right out of the box if you can. And the easier but sometimes imperfect method of doing this is choosing one of the white balance presets that the camera offers. These are self-explanatory and are named for the lighting conditions that you should use them in, and 90% of the time these will get the job done. For the 10% of time when they don't work, or if you just want greater color accuracy than a preset might give, setting a custom white balance is the way to go. Setting a custom white balance is super easy and it just takes a minute to do. You do need a gray card like this and then all you have to do is go into your white balance, select the custom option, and then take a photo of the gray card in the lighting your subject will be in and you're good to go. I actually did a whole video detailing this process and you can check that video out right here. On to metering which I'm going to keep short and sweet. For portraits use spot metering. You want to meter 
meter for your subject so that when you set your exposure, the person you are photographing is exposed the way you want them to be. And for this, spot metering is the only choice. Spot metering looks at just the single spot when calculating the exposure, typically your center focus points, and it ignores everything else in the scene. Meaning, if you put the center focus point on your subject's face when you're setting your exposure settings, then your subject will be perfectly exposed. Now, before we talk about choosing your exposure settings, I wanted to let you know that I put all of this information together, including a printable portrait settings checklist. I put all of this into my free portrait settings cheat sheet, which you can get at this link right here. So, exposure. Choosing the right ISO aperture and shutter speed is about having a process because each situation you find yourself shooting in is going to be unique. With the process, you want to identify your principal setting. This is the setting you are most concerned with for the photo. And when shooting portraits, photographers are typically concerned with depth of field, which means that your aperture is going to be your principal setting. With that setting identified, the process for choosing your settings looks like this. First, you have to determine if you want shallow or greater depth of field. For the sake of the example, let's say we're going for shallow depth of field. That means we want a larger aperture opening in the lens, so we'll choose an aperture setting like f2.8. It also means we need to be aware of the other factors that affect depth of field and how to use them, which you can learn about in this video right here. Then we need to set a shutter speed, and generally we want a shutter speed fast enough to ensure we get a sharp photo. A quick and easy way to figure out what shutter speed to use is to set the shutter speed to one over the focal length of your lens. Then, once that's set, point the camera at your subject with the metering point on your subject's face and set your ISO to bring your exposure indicator to zero. Then, you take a test shot, evaluate the exposure, and if needed, adjust your ISO and or your shutter speed to increase or decrease the exposure and then you shoot. Now, there are a couple of caveats to this. For instance, if you're shooting outdoors in full sun, you'll find that sometimes you can't use an aperture like f2.8 because it's just too bright. Even with your lowest ISO and your fastest shutter speed, if the sun's too bright, you just won't be able to use apertures like f2.8. In that case, you either have to come back later or earlier when it's not quite so bright, or you use a neutral density filter to cut some of that sun. Or if you're shooting in low light, you might not be able to get a fast enough shutter speed even with your ISO all the way up and your aperture all the way open. In that case, if possible, you can add light or if you can't add light, you may have to wait for it to get brighter or move to a location with better lighting. Also, no matter how perfect your settings are, they can't make up for bad lighting. If you're shooting in unflattering light, like harsh noon sun, really ugly interior lighting, or really strong backlighting, Following this process will help you get the best photo you can under those conditions, but it can't fix bad lighting. Finally, don't forget that I put all of this and the principal checklist into my free portrait settings cheat sheet, which you can get at this link right here. If you have any questions about any of this, let me know in the comments. And I have a question for you. It's totally off topic, but I'm curious. What is your favorite game to play? It can be any kind of game at all. Let me know in the comments, which is where I'll share mine as well. Now, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of my videos, and then get out there and and take some damn photos. And depending on how, oh my God, I can't read. Ugh.